The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 24 minutes to go until the opening bell. And we pick things up with a little bit of mixed action S&Ps right now. Negative by four points, trading at 59.66. We were about 20 points lower at 5 a.m. this morning. We catch a bid right back to where we were towards the close of yesterday's action. NASDAQ 100, you see the acceleration to negative prices yesterday. I get off the air at 10 o'clock, 10.30, the market turns around and you get an acceleration of 300 points in the NASDAQ 100. All the markets accelerate higher into the close yesterday. Today, slightly off that price level with the NASDAQ 100, off by 35 points or two tenths percent. The Dow had quite a day yesterday, right? Far surpassing where you were in negative territory. Dow up to 44,146, we're just off that level. It, but we're positive by 30 points in the Russell, positive by six this morning. How about Bitcoin? You talk about a nice round number, 10, excuse me, 10,000. I was going to say $100,005. We're back to 98,240. You know, we were talking about MicroStrategy, folks, okay? And hindsight's 2020. But boy, things got a little bit lofty in this equity in particular. People pulling some money off the table. Folks, we just traded from 548 to 375, and with that, Bitcoin hit 100,000 overnight. The premium that is built into this equity right now, MSTR is the symbol, okay? They're holding like 30 billion, 32 billion, something like that, of Bitcoin, I think it is, and right now you got a market cap of 89 billion. There's no reason why they couldn't trade back to parity. They were at parity at some time in 2013, and you see the dislocation from the actual price of Bitcoin itself with Bitcoin pushing 98,000 micro strategy at 548 yesterday at 400 today. Remarkable. All right, we jump around. Gold contract continues to catch a bid. We got to back it up a little bit further to see the lows you got of 2541. And yeah, we got quite a bid going on, even with a pretty strong dollar, all things considered. You jump over to yields right now. That's your 10 year. Let's put it back to a daily for a moment. Zooming in on the action of the election, you could make the case of lower lows, but look where we are again. The low of that day, the day following the election, the market just chopping around at that price level. No dramatic moves just yet. Dollar a little bit differently as we've talked about DXY. You jump over to the dollar right now, and yeah, a little bit different to say the least. You talk about dollar strength, okay? And think about how well gold is doing with this action in the dollar. Yields right where they were the day following the election. The dollar index now, when you put it on a daily, dramatically higher. There's your election day. We come into it at 104. We just pushed 108. We're at 107.38. And you take a look at this on a longer term basis. You're starting to break above this consolidation that's been there for two years. You break above here, you're going to 114. There's nothing in the way. You're getting into this candle that was the week of November 7, 2022, when you had the dollar go from 111 all the way down to 106. And yeah, we're bumping up against the 108 area now. You back it up to the highs of a year ago, 107.34. So literally almost right to the tick where we were in October of 2023. But dollar strength coming at you. And yeah, you check out the gold contract. If you told me that gold, excuse me, if you told me that the dollar was going to spike to a 108 handle, you said, where's gold going to be this morning? I'd say it's not going to be pushing 2700. And it is. It's holding up remarkably well, even in the face of a strong dollar with yields stuck at about a 4.4%. Let's pull it up exactly where we're at. It is 4.4 exactly on the 10 year, the yield on the 10 year, it's been stuck pretty much right at that level for some considerable period of time. All right, we check in on some of the equities. You jump over Google. So quite a day for Google yesterday is the realization 
Now what's interesting is this news was pretty much out there Wednesday, but the actual filing is what freaked the market out with the Justice Department trying to have Google sell off Chrome. And the market drives from 176 to 165. You had some other culprits trading lower. Meta shares from 570 to 550. We've clawed back a lot of those losses. You had Amazon lower as well from 204 to 195. Just huge, huge accelerations. You jump over to Apple, it gets it all back from 230, 226. And then there were some winners yesterday to the likes of Salesforce. How about Salesforce, right? A little bit of a rotation potentially. No pullback whatsoever in Salesforce. You go from 325 to 342. We're opening $4 higher yet again. So it's interesting. Snowflake had some remarkable earnings yesterday. They're continuing higher today. Up by another $4 for Snowflake. William Sonoma, Wednesday the action, 181 and Target to the downside, 122. You check out some of those other retailers. Kohl's, a little bit of a bid in the pre-market, back to 1672. They took it on the chin with Target earlier this week. Kohl's trading lower. <clears throat> and then how about Gap? GPS, no? What is Gap? Shame on me. Gap, there it is. Gap with some great earnings and why are they doing it? The story this morning from their earnings last night, more high-end earners coming in to the likes of Old Navy, Gap, and we jump over to that as we kick things off. Strong start to the holiday season, and you're talking about Old Navy, Banana Republic, Athleta. But yeah, you get into the numbers. 72 cents versus 58, and they beat on revenue as well, but barely. Yeah, and what they talked about here, Old Navy, sales growing 1% to $2.2 billion. Gap grew 1% to 899 million. Banana Republic, 2% to 469 million. And even Athleta. And I'm not familiar. So that's the athleisure arm of Gap's empire. Grew sales by 4% to 290 million. But what they talked about is high, more people making money to the tune of $100,000 and seeking out savings. It's a common theme and it's coming across the board and you got Gap spiking dramatically higher today you're going to be up by about almost four dollars on that equity you take a longer term look yeah you're going to gap basically above where you were here you're going to open at almost 26 dollars you're going to be above where you were in august and we got the double top out there hanging at about 28.50 to 30 dollars from june jump over to walmart shares this thing is just a rocket ship look at the daily it doesn't stop right Three quarters ago, they surprised to the upside. Two quarters ago, they surprised to the upside. A quarter ago, they surprised to the upside. This time, they surprised to the upside. Consumer behavior, right? I've talked about it. We've laughed about it. My affinity for Sam's right now. But the savings are real. And in this environment, we're hyper aware of those savings taking place. All right, we jump back. What else are we going to talk about? Happy J.P. Morgan. Bloomberg's got a story today. Doesn't hold them back, man. Uh, the Justice Department looking into ties with an Iranian oil kingpin's hedge fund. Regulators looking at the bank's ties. But the market says, yeah, we're trading at 245. The market likes the banks. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. And we're going to talk a little bit of J.P. Morgan. And yeah, the U.S. probes. J.P. Morgan's ties to Iranian oil kingpins hedge fund. I mean, right out of a storybook movie, right? Made for the big screen. But yeah, it's at the early stages. But they're wondering whether they complied with all the rules and regulations when it took Ocean Leonid Investments as a cl client. It's always remarkable, these banks, man. They just end up paying the fines, as my dad would say. It's a cost of doing business, and you move on. J.P. Morgan, right? But the stock doesn't even move. We got a couple tech stories. You start off with Apple and Google. All right, this on the heels of Google with the Justice Department trying to take away Chrome from their monopolistic empire. Apple and Google could face a competition probe over their huge mobile ecosystems in the U.K., yeah, the battle's on against these companies. I don't imagine that the Trump administration, you know, it's quite an interesting analysis of mergers, right, regulation, and then bringing in big tech and how Trump views them. Because you have a bit of a dichotomy there, for sure. Nonetheless, the EU's coming after them. Now, Apple, Google, yeah, we know. They have a... But it is interesting that even they are two competitors. You have a duopoly, for sure, between... Android and iOS. But beyond that, it's pretty tough. Now, you jump over to Amazon. This news out this morning. So they invest another $4 billion in Anthropic as NVIDIA comes out with their earnings this week. And we talk a lot about AI. It's going off my ear here. You jump over to Amazon. So Amazon's up about $2 right now, trading at $199.85 from $198 and change just yesterday. You jump over to NVIDIA shares following their earnings. Wednesday after the bell, you spike to $152. You talk about volatility yesterday, right? $25 billion shares outstanding, and you're driving down almost $10, up 
eight dollars and change that's 200 to 300 billion dollars of market cap of oscillation this morning we're slightly in the green but yeah amazon they invest four billion dollars and this brings their total investment to eight billion dollars remember what did microsoft put in open ai i think in the beginning the first big round was something like 10 billion talk about paying off uh, but yes this is Basically, OpenAI's greatest competitor, beyond probably Google. And this is founded by ex-OpenAI research executives. Okay, and so this brings their total investment to $8 billion. They're going to retain their position as a minority investor, according to Anthropic. And yeah, the web services will also become Anthropic's primary cloud and training partner. You better believe they're coming for it, man. So in March, they put in $2.75 billion. And they put in 1.25 billion in September of 2023. Trying to play a little bit of a catch up to Microsoft. Because of course, Microsoft and Azure, and then you have AWS and Anthropic. All right, what else we got talked about? Yeah, this one interesting from the journal. And I talked about it in the demo is gonna happen. It kind of writes itself. I don't I don't really think that Trump was serious with this one, which is pretty remarkable to say in terms of not being serious with the attorney general nomination. But it goes down exactly how it was written right from the get go. He nominates him. He steps away from the House. The report now you can make the argument does not have to become public. He withdraws his nomination and Pam Bondi from Florida. A Trump loyalist steps in who will have no problem getting confirmed with the Senate. And it takes a little bit of heat off of Hank Seth with defense, which is one that I think would have taken more heat had it not been for Gates charging down the line to take all the heat. Yeah, I got a couple articles talking about what comes down the line in the next administration. Marijuana industry could stay in limbo under Trump. Hands-off policy on cannabis will be a bad outcome for a business already struggling with ambiguous laws. Hopefully they get a hold of that one, man. It seems like if you're in, you know, we just had uh, an amendment in Florida that would have legalized it recreationally. And the argument against it, of course, was that drugs are bad, along with the argument that you would have been able to smoke pot everywhere and there would have been people smoking on every corner. And I get that conversation as well. You needed 60%. I think you got like 55%. But it is interesting. Even in a state like Florida... Okay, you had a 55% number. It's, it's, um, it's a populist tent, trend, even though there's still nuances like the ability to smoke pot in every corner. No, that's not what you want. I got a three-year-old, okay, no matter what. But you can see that even in a state like Florida that loves Trump, 55% wanted that done. And we'll see where it happens because there is. A lot of ambiguity on the federal level, which has crushed many of these equities across the board. I mean, do you remember the run? It's almost so long ago that you almost can't even remember the run. You pull up a stop like, can it be growth? I remember thinking this thing was going to have a real future. Is that even the high? I don't even think that's the high. i got to add an extra time list. I'll add it. But yes, the likes of 122, and I think it even goes back further than that, folks. When is that? November 2021. That might be it. And we've been shopping around at about 4 to $5. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But the market, thinking a hands-off might come. And a do-nothing approach to pause that market in terms of... Yeah, that whole entire op industry operating in limbo. You know, not being able to deal with banks, right? The cap, the cash that is used in that market... Yeah, look at this. The pure U.S. cannabis ETF. And that's what I just pulled up. Late 2021 was the part chart of cannabis. The whole entire ETF, $26 down to $5. All right, as we come into the opening bell, yeah, how about a little bit of currency, too? I was reading this one from Bloomberg. Currency traders are betting on a little bit of volatility. Hedge funds buy up options to pay out if FX swings increase. Now, we, with 
with the dollar spiking to 108, right? The one thing that's been moving dramatically is the dollar. We went over how yields, yields are stuck right now. Market hasn't figured out whether we're going higher for longer. Fed on pause for right now. The December meeting in limbo, about a 50-50 chance whether they're gonna cut in December for their meeting. You go out further than that, the market thinks that maybe we get one or two cuts over the next five meetings. Currency traders though, you look at a couple of these charts, okay? Euro traders start hedging long-term price swings. One-year volatility jumped last week by the most in 20 months. And it would make sense. There's volatility. And we're not going to find out until what happens. Now, one of the arguments they make in this article is we might see the volatility run up so much up to January 20th when the next administration and Trump comes in that it might actually calm things because so much volatility will be priced into the market expecting some of those tariffs, some of those policies to influence the market. Nonetheless, today we get dollar higher. We're coming back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the stock market open. You get a little bit of spike to higher price. 59.74. We're positive by three points on the S&P's NASDAQ 100. We're negative by just 13. Look at the Dow. Up by another 87 points. Back above 44,000. And the Russell positive by almost half a percent at 23.83. Bitcoin. We touch 100,000 and we've dipped a bit. We're off about 2,000 now from that high at 97,900. 
Check in on MicroStrategy with a three handle, 396.44. Watch out for that one, folks. Still a ton of premium built in versus the actual Bitcoin that they hold. Almost three times. We'll jump over to Gap this morning. They get back some of that gain, but still up by about 14.5% right now for Gap. We keep our eye on the dollar, pushing 107.53. And as I mentioned, remarkable strength in gold right now, sitting at 26.88, up by $13 on the session as we have the dollar spike to above 108. We check out some of the banks. JP Morgan, slightly in the red by one tenth. Bank of America, slightly in the green this morning. City, yeah, they're all just chopping around right now. Jump over to Wells Fargo, off the high of 76 barely. And we jump over to some of the airlines. Let's check it out. Delta, yeah, so we were talking about this, right? Look at this run. You talk about optimism. You know, what's remarkable here is I'm going to take this chart off. And the move that we just got is basically a one to one. We got well above it even. You go from 30 bucks up to almost 55, you pull back to 37.50 and a one to one would have put you at $60. You've reached $66. A one to six one eight gets you to seventy four dollars. Maybe that's where you head. This is going to be the busiest Thanksgiving holiday season ever. I believe they're talking about out there. So taking a look at the S&P, the reason why I pause, put this on a daily. The day of the election is November 5th, okay? The day following the election is November 6th. That was the day we got the first acceleration. You trade up to 6,053. We pull back to 5,850. The dollar is the thing that stands out the most right now. Yeah, we have a little bit of a market pop trading at 59.73, but you put this on a technical basis. And look at how the week of the election, you didn't even take out, you had less volume than the prior week and less volume than the week after. The week of the election in the S&Ps, you had less volume on that expansion than you did on the slightly red bar the week before and the red bar the week after. That's not indicative of a revolutionary changing market event in the S&Ps. Doesn't mean we can't go higher, but you want to keep this stuff on your radar over the next couple of months in terms of what's the market pricing in. You take a look at the 10 year. We're basically just right back to where we were practically coming into that. But then you take a look at the dollar. And we have a dramatic move that has sustained. And so what would that say about what's going to happen if we have yields stuck where they are? We have a market that's a little bit skittish, but we have the dollar that's about to strengthen. I don't know if yields can stay where they are if the dollar is going to strengthen to that degree. Maybe they can. Maybe other areas. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, what a bummer. Consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. 
Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
DFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. DFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. All right, welcome back, folks. My computer just went out like that, but we got everything back. I'm going to get my chart in the den here. Give me one second as I pull this over. Get that there. We're clicking this button. And we are back in the den. Okay. One more second here. Yeah, that one was a weird one. We got power supply backups everywhere. Somehow the electric was fine. The power supply backup just got me. Just like that. All right. We are back. I'm just pulling up the chat so I can see. Ah, thank you. Okay, I just started that for you as well, Al. All right, thanks for hanging on, folks. So, we got our man Basil Chapman. He's going to be coming up next. We got our man Steve Rhodes, Fast Market. You're going to have Larry at one. Larry's in there doing live trading right now, folks. You want to check out live trading, check it out on the front page of TFNN. You can still get in there with our man Larry. He's in there twice a month. He's going to be in there twice a month in December as well. And, yeah, so you jump into the story that keeps persisting, right? Who is Trump going to pick? So, you have... Former Fed President Kevin Warsh, yeah, former Fed Governor, new president in the sound. Um, and this all ties into the Fed as well. So it's seen as he's probably the leading candidate right now. And then when it comes to 2026, he will be the Fed chair after Powell. And then potentially you have somebody else coming in to fill that role. Yeah. And, you know, this is where it all comes into, because you have Warsh out there, wrote a 2018 opinion piece in the journal that said Trump's tariff plans could lead to what he called economic isolationism. So we'll see how it all sorts out. All right, let's just take a look at some of the equities today. We jump around. And we'll kick it off with Tesla shares. So Tesla, just consolidating near this top of about 340. We hit 358. We've talked about the skepticism of Tesla at this price point, but I am not ste stepping in with a short just yet. Although MicroStrategy, man, would have paid off if you cherry pick the top, but how are you going to cherry pick the top when the red comes all in one day, right? It's more just the reason why I was talking about that, to have your spikes back up on your back, to realize that the volatility you're dealing with, if you were fortunate enough to catch the, the run in MicroStrategy from 200 to 550 in the span of a month, Bitcoin had not done that percentage-wise, and as a result, the pain on the way down is going to be much more pronounced. When you look at the fact that Bitcoin just went from up 50% at the same time that you have MicroStrategy up 150%. We jump around to Amazon shares. Flat this morning at 198. You see the trail off after the election, right? You get a bump the day before, a day of the election. You get the bump the day following when it's pricing in a Trump win. And Amazon, now back to prior to the election. Meta shares, almost back to where you were trading at in April. When you're at 520, you're at 560. Microsoft trading at 415 from 468. Google's a different story. At 167 <clears throat> from 193. Then you jump over to the likes of Netflix, man, which is just not stopping. Right? We talked about this. 
actually accelerating out of its channel to the upside, pushing 908 yesterday. You're at 897 for next flick shares. Longer term, you gotta go back even further. I gotta set these. Let's add a time frame here. Yeah, for what it's worth. All right, we check back in on the dollar right now. Look at this dollar again. Yeah, catch another bid. We're at the highs of the session this morning. Pre-market, you had a run up to 108.70. And for you longer-term gold bulls, this is a good sign that we got this much strength even with the dollar pushing 108. Because all gold really did, right? Maybe the second run starts at around June. 50% retracement of the run we had in June was all it was. You come back to this little consolidation area we had in August of about 25.50. And just like that, we're pushing prices that we were just at almost a month ago, October 17th. After quite a pullback, but the dollar remaining strong, pushing 107.60 this morning and yields right now holding steady. At about 4.4%, the yield on the 10 year. And when you look at where the Fed is pricing things, we pull up the CME Fed Watch tool. And again, I always say this isn't the Holy Grail. Don't follow it. Let's accept those cookies. Why not? But it is indicative of what the market's pricing in. And for the December meeting, it's about a three to two right now probability that you get a 25 basis point cut. But as I talked about, things get more interesting when you go out to June. Because you go out to June, and you're either getting one cut or two by June. Well, I just told you the market's pricing in a 60-40 that we're going to get that one cut by December. That means that potentially the market's saying if we get that cut in December, you're probably only getting one more cut over the next four meetings by June. The market's on hold just like the Fed is on hold right now to find out what the future beholds. You all get to find out. All right, we check back in on Gap, on their strong numbers. They give it back, though. Still up by 8%, but look at that sell-off. Down almost $4 from that spike high at twenty-seven fifteen. What would have happened if they disappointed? They came in with good numbers. You spike above that high from August, and then you give it back, and we're trading lower from those highs. Jump over to some other retailers. So Kohl's catching a bid. Maybe on those Gap numbers? Goal's up by almost 6% right now. And maybe it is. Let's see what we got going on with goals. Yeah, nothing really. They're catching a bit on those gap numbers. Look at this. Target up by 2%. Up $2 to $123.70. Walmart retail, a bright spot here, continuing. Walmart up by 1.2%. You got Target shares up by 2%. Kohl's, yeah. TJ Maxx slightly in the red. Yeah, Walmart's such a beast. I know I keep talking about it. I think at Target, you know, we talked about Target on their earnings. There's a real chance that Target goes down to 100, but I tend to almost like Target at these price levels right now. You know, they took it on the chin. But if you think about it, part of the reason why they took it on the chin was because they stocked up on inventory ahead of that port strike. As a longer-term investor, that's probably what you'd want, right? Management got ahead of a potential problem, and yeah, they're paying for it in the short term because they basically bought insurance if there was a port strike for a longer period of time. Cost them more than they thought. They got too much inventory right now. I'm going to be scouring Target for sales because they're coming. But you're at 123, you're down from 254, and they're in a tough spot in the middle of the economy in terms of you're not a price saver like Walmart, you're not necessarily a Williams Sonoma, which is just through the roof, up another half a percent today to 173.26. But at that valuation, I do. I start to like Target when you're getting in at 123.75 and you're up by 2% today. Yeah, how about that? Kohl's up 6%. All right, we talked about Netflix. You jump over to Warner Brothers Discovery. 
Look at this run. From $6, just about a quarter to go, to $10.31. It's gonna be the turnaround for Max and Warner Brothers, up to 10.30, right where we kicked off the year. All right, folks, stay tuned, one more segment. We're coming back, we'll talk some more equities, don't go away. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've been talking about the dollar and how about the euro, right? The euro trading at 104.06. We usually talk to our man Teddy Kegstats on Wednesday. Uh, Teddy had an obligation, couldn't be make, couldn't make it, but he's going to be back this coming Wednesday, right before we go on break for Halloween, uh, Halloween Thanksgiving. But we're going to talk about this because, man, it has been quite a trading range for the euro dollar, pretty similar to the trading range we've had for the dollar index. Euro, biggest component, but you see the breakaway there. And this has to do with the headline, um, weak PMIs weighing on European currencies. So, yeah, the market's a little bit worried. Just checking it out. Yeah, you got weak PMI data. And, um, yeah, Europe is not in the place that the U.S. is. And you're seeing that divergence. You're seeing the euro break below levels that we haven't seen in two years. 
95 is out there for the euro, and that would correlate to what we were talking about earlier, which was the 114 area, the inverse action in the dollar index. We'll keep our eye on it. And we'll finish it up with the yen. How about it? The yen, we put it back on a daily, 154.86. So you see the divergence here. When you talk about what's going on today, it's about the euro, right? You see that breakaway, the euro US dollar pushing 103 handle. We might be going back to parity. And with that, the dollar index, but remarkable that gold, gold holding up. As we're up now almost $22 at $26.96 in the price of gold. All right, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Starting your Friday off right here at TFNN. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Don't forget about Basil's outstanding newsletter, the opening call, folks. He just did a webinar last week. If you sign up for the opening call, you gain access to the archive of that webinar. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can sign up for that while you're just waiting for Basil's program coming up right now. Folks, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Stay tuned for Basil, and I look forward to seeing you back here Monday morning. Have a great one, everybody.